Uh, our next presenter is uh, Jack Stringham, who is a fourth year student here at uh, the University of Utah. Um, <coughs> we may not all know that uh, ophthalmology is Jack's second career choice. Um, he initially wanted to be a professional skier, not a downhill skier, but an aerial skier, like with fancy flips and things like that. And Jack has successfully completed a double backflip and landed on his feet, both in a pool and on the snow. Um, he's also um, unsuccessfully attempted many backflips in the pool and on the snow and survived to, to be here today to present for us. So today, I'll be presenting on a summer research project of mine, silicone IOL calcification in eyes with asteroid hyalosis. This was made possible by a grant to prevent research and an NIH training grant, and there's no kind of um, conflict of interest financially in this by the authors. So dystrophic calcification of IOLs re requiring explantations typically associated with hydrophilic acrylic lenses. Uh, but back in 2004, 2005, the Mamlis Warner Lab reported four cases of dystrophic calcification in silicone IOL lenses in eyes with asteroid hyalosis. Uh, three of these lenses were the silicone plates <coughs> depicted there in the bottom left corner, and one lens was a three-piece silicone lens. Uh, two additional cases were later described in literature, and we now report 16 additional cases. So asteroid hyalosis is characterized by small, brilliant, reflecting, benign white-yellow opaci opacities called asteroid bodies, which float in a normal vitreous body. Uh, the origin of these asteroid bodies is un unknown. It is predominantly unilateral. Uh, the prevalence is about 1% with no race or gender predisposition. It may be correlated with diabetes, and asteroid bodies um, are known to be composed of hydroxyapatite, which is made up of calcium and phosphate. So the pathological process and clinical course which led to the pacification of these lenses and their explantation uh, went as follows. The posterior capsule is known to serve as a barrier to uh, large non-electrolyte molecules or to negative electrolytes. And asteroid bodies are not charged and small and uh, which then allowed these asteroid bodies over time to slowly diffuse through the posterior capsule and precipitate on the posterior optic surface leading to whitish granular deposits which gradually appeared uh, on the posterior optic surface. And so these patients returned to their physicians with decreased visual acuity, typically about uh, seven and a half years after implantation of the lenses, at which time um, many of the physicians used the YAG laser for dusting in a posterior capsulotomy. Uh, but with the posterior capsulotomy, that then uh, directly exposed the posterior, cap or the posterior optic uh, to these asteroid bodies, leading to rapid reaccumulation of these deposits and, ex and to explantation of these lenses, uh, typically within a year and a half. These are the 16 new cases which we're reporting today. Uh, of note, all these cases came from the U.S. except case number 12 came from Germany, and cases number 14 and 16 represent the most modern of silicone uh, IOLs with square optic edges. So the analysis of these explanted IOLs, all of them underwent growth analysis and light microscopy. Selected lenses underwent alizarin red staining for calcium. Selected lenses also underwent scanning electron microscopy coupled with energy dispersive uh, x-ray spectroscopy for elemental composition analysis. And we also looked at clinical data um, in relation to 111 hydrophilic acrylic lenses explanted because of calcification uh, for comparison to see if there's any correlation with asteroid hyalosis uh, with those. Mm -hmm. um, the science behind it all, to be honest, I'm not so clear on. I, I know that it analyzes, or analyzes the, the components um, there. I think it uses, I think Dr. Warner, the expert here, has
we'll see one of those graphs, which, which it produced here in just a minute. Uh, so we also looked at uh, 111 hydrophilic acrylic lenses, see if they were associated with asteroid halosis. So results, uh, we found that asteroid halosis was found in 13 of the 15 uh, cases of calcification of these silicone lenses. There was uh, no record of asteroid halosis in three of the cases, uh, but, of, but I don't know that necessarily excludes asteroid halosis in these cases. It very well could have been present subclinically or, or not noticed. We, we did have one case in particular that there was no record of asteroid halosis. And uh, later the physician again looked in the eye and did indeed see asteroid bodies. Uh, deposits were only on the posterior optic surface of the silicone lens and were composed of calcium phosphate. It is significant that they were only found on the posterior optic surface. Uh, the hydrophilic acrylic lenses which were calcified, uh, those deposits occurred both on the anterior surface, posterior optic surface, and a lot of it actually occurred within the lens itself. So our IOL analysis, all of them underwent microphotographs in which we saw uh, this white amorphous granular material which is consistent with calcium deposits. They are all located on the posterior optic, uh, centrally located, and as you can see here, Many lenses have these YAG pits from the dusting. You can see the calcium deposits here with the alizarin red staining. And here's a scanning electron microscopy, which revealed crusted granular morphology. And here's the energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, which analyzed the, the elements present. Uh, and so here's the graph which it produced. And as we expected to see peaks with silicone, oxygen, and carbon, which is consistent with the lens material itself. We also had some salt deposit contaminants. And as you can see, peaks with calcium and phosphorus, which confirm the presence of hydroxyapatite, which is the known makeup of asteroid bodies. So th these 16 lenses, which we're reporting to you today, represents eight different IOL designs with five different manufacturers made of five different uh, silicone materials. We're able to determine the, uh, the difference between these silicone materials using a refractive index, uh, with different refractive indexes uh, representing a different type of silicone material. As you can see, the names are highlighted and color-coded. Uh, those in yellow have the same refractive index as those two in white, uh, representing different types of silicone. And it is significant that we see this in different types of silicone, because initially, now, all these dysrophic calcifications occurred in the star plate silicone. And people originally believed uh, that as they changed the silicone material that they no longer have problems with this dysrophic calcification. But as the Mammalist Warner Lab later reported one case in a three-piece design, as you can see here the refractive index of 1.46 differs from that of the star plate of 1.413. So this is significant, showed that it does indeed occur in different silicone uh, materials. And this is also a, a particularly interesting case when it happened with um, a patient with bilateral asteroid halosis. And in the contralateral eye, they had a hydrophobic acryl acrylic lens, which was not calcified. So our study now reports this phenomenon in additional silicone lenses. As I mentioned, even with the most modern silicone lenses with the uh, square optic, uh, which you know leads us to believe that uh, this opacification in uh, silicone lenses in eyes with asteroid halosis is more widespread than initially thought and not just limited to that specific type of silicone material. So again, we did look at 111 cases of dystrophic calcification of hydrophilic acrylic lenses uh, looking for asteroid halosis, and we did not find any note of asteroid halosis in any of their records. So it appears that uh, dystrophic calcification secondary to asteroid halosis is restricted to uh, silicone lenses. So in conclusion, um, including this current series, there are currently 22 cases of calcification of silicone lenses uh, that are at this time published. And talk, talking to Dr. Liliana Warner, uh, she does report she's actually received more lenses uh, since this has been published. Uh, involving eight different designs manufactured from different silicone materials described in literature. Uh, the presence of asteroid halosis was confirmed in 86% of these 22 cases. 
and this phenomenon does appear to be restricted to silicone lenses, and it's unclear why the number of cases is relatively small, given the large number of uh, silicone IOLs that I'm sure are out there in eyes with aspirate halosis. Uh, part of that might be due to the lack of recognition of uh, the correlation not being reported, so that we may see an increase here in the future. Uh, but implementation of silicone lenses in the eyes of aspirate hyalosis uh, may be re reconsidered in the future. And I'd just like to give a special thanks to Dr. Mamlis and Dr. Warner, who have been my mentors on this project and throughout medical school, and have really made it possible for me to pursue a career in ophthalmology. Questions? Yeah, Jeff. No, so it was... 12 of the 16 had uh, YAG done. Correct me if I'm wrong, Liliana, but the Dustin is actually somewhat, uh, did show some improvement here, where with the hydrophilic acrylic lenses, when they were calcified, didn't show any improvement. Yes. So, yeah, as the posterior capsule was removed, we then saw, in those that were removed, rapid reaccumulation within the next year, which led to their explantation. Yeah. You know, to be honest, that's, I'm unsure on that. Dr. Warner, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, the hydroxyapatite doesn't have any charge to it. It's completely neutral. And Thank you.